and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for some Sultai Kiora. It's going to kick off our stream today. Um, we have a, a good looking donation deck here where we get to play Kiora, Bio Essence Hydra, Soul Diviner. I'm all about that. So that's what we got going on here. After this, we're going to be going back to some standard 2020 decks. Um, after this, had a lot of. Uh, good responses and everything from from that format people are really enjoying it people are playing it to level up with the experience right now so we'll be going back with with some new brews there but before that uh we got sultai kiora like i was saying all right so so kiora is kind of the star of our deck so this is whenever we play a creature with power four or greater we get to draw a card and then also uh, we can untap a permanent with that the the thing that's like that's like really key here also is just how many loyalty counters Kiora has on it. With Kiora having seven loyalty counters, uh, it has plenty of food for Soul Diviner. We'll go to a Soul. We'll talk about Soul Diviner first. So yeah, we have plenty of food for Soul Diviner here. Removing a counter from it to be able to draw a card. Plus, you can use your Kiora to untap your Soul Diviner also if you want to activate your Soul Diviner again. So that's, that's pretty nice there. But then also having a lot of loyalty and the ability to ramp by untapping a land can get us to Bio Essence Hydra and make a really big Bio Essence Hydra. That's right, we get uh, Bio Essence Hydra get, gains counters for however, however many loyalty counters you have on Planeswalkers. Um, as you all know, this is one of my favorite cards. Really like playing this card. I've played a lot of teamer decks with Bio Essence Hydra. I have not played Bio Essence Hydra in Sultai though. Um, but that's that's not our only four power creature in the deck to, to draw cards with Kiora. We also have other Hydras as well. We got a couple Hydroid Krasis and a couple Voracious Hydras, which again they can they can be large creatures with lots of counters on them, which is very good for Soul Diviner, um, removing the counters and drawing cards. Nissa makes lands with counters, so Nissa also just kind of synergizes with a lot of stuff. Not only does is Nissa have a lot of loyalty for Bio Essence Hydra. But then also you can make three three land, which you can turn into two, turn into a two two land, and draw a card. For example, there. So not a lot of cool little things going on here. Golgari Queen is just a really solid planeswalker, and of course with Bio Essence Hydra you want a good amount of planeswalkers, and obviously Tam Tamio is a very good as well. So yeah, this looks like a pretty sweet little deck. So here we go. So we're gonna go ahead and. Uh, play a league for this. This is Julius that sent me this deck. Julius has donated a lot of really cool decks in the past. All right, let's see. Let's see if we can get to five wins before two losses. And here we go. No, our d this deck isn't isn't rotation proof completely. Um, it has Lana War Elf in it. But I kind of feel like that's the only card just when I was, you know, let me go back. And then, of course, the mana base. Um, you know, we got Drowned Catacombs, Woodland Cemeteries, Hinterland Harbors, of course, in here. But that's it. Oh, Jade Light Ranger. Right. And Jade Light Ranger works pretty well, Soul Diviner also, being able to remove the counters from Jade Light Ranger to draw cards. So not too much stuff. Sideboard only has one cast down. All right, so obviously I don't have much going on with the hand, but we have turn one elf, turn two Kiora. By then, by turn three, hopefully we draw something really good to ramp into. Like we could have turn three Nissa here if we draw a Nissa, or turn three Bio Essence Hydra, um, you know, or or uh, we find some other good card to play. So we got a lot going on. We got a lot of acceleration here. There we go. But not much going on. That's what I meant to say. A lot of acceleration. It's not a bad place to be. Kind of playing off the top. We got just 24 lands. So 
So more than three-fifths of our deck are spells still. So I can remove a counter from Kiora to do one damage to them. I'll just keep Kiora at seven. Yeah, this would be a perfect time for Biowise and Sidra. Yeah, after rotation, yeah, you could play Gilded Goose to, to replace Llanowar off, and then you can also play... Um, you can also play Oko in the three-mana slot to help replace Llanowar off, where Oko gives you extra... You know, Oko has a lot of loyalty for a three-mana Planeswalker and gets you extra food for Gilded Goose and a lot of loyalty for Bio Essence Hydra. So by waiting a turn, I waited a turn on Voracious Hydra so that we get to draw the card. Let's get moving. And I'm just going to make it an 8 9. I know I could kill Rejuvenator. I'm just gonna make it a very, very big threat. <laughs> Hail Hydra, yeah, we got a Hydra deck to start with. Thank you so much. The biggest boss. Ross over there. Field of the Dead deck isn't. Um, this isn't a fight you can win. Is it known for playing too much removal? I've got it. It's not the worst for us. We don't really have anything else to do anyway. So we'll be able to kill Llanowar off and draw another card, play another big Hydra. That does. Hmm. See, with them not attacking, I guess I may have to just make it just a 4-5. So I can go 4-5 Hydra, fight the Rejuvenator, have Llanowar off attack to Fairy. That's an option. I think I'm leaning towards that. We could just play Golgari Queen. Um, yeah, I think we just go with my first line, though. Ooh, bioessence. The ocean surges, life thrives. Ah, now what? Bioessence Hydra. That can be a big creature. So definitely hoping that my opponent does not have time wipe or any removal for bioessence hydra. <laughs> yep. Yeah, Shadow Tribal is so much fun to play. Saving that one for last. No, Soul Diviner cannot remove. Oh no, yeah, Soul Diviner can remove. Never mind. It does say land. I was thinking that it. I, I was thinking Soul Diviner cannot remove from land. So yes, if you have Blast Zone, you can remove the counter from Blast Zone with Soul Diviner. I thought. I thought it didn't say land for some reason. 
All right, unfortunately, our opponent did have the time wipe. That's quite bad for me. If you show remorse, I'll show restraint. Here goes nothing. Hypothesis with you. I have learned much from my ancestors. So it's pretty unlikely we're gonna win this Wonder now. Ripples and grows. I'm good at what I do, and what I do is win. They can kill Tamio and Vraska here. They didn't have time wipe, but I really liked our chances. Because the bio essence hydra, it said 9 9, but it was going to be growing a whole lot more. It's like even the next turn, just playing like Golgari Queen would have made it a 15 15. If we play Kiora, also would have made it a 20, 22 22. So we could have attacked for 22 the, the next turn. Like this, like this past turn, if they didn't have time wipe, we could have been attacking for 22. Trample. Plus our 4-5 trample, so 26 total trample. But unfortunately, they had time wipe. That was good. That was a really good Legion's End right there. Yeah, we don't have the ability to to haste our Hydro without having Domery, but we do get Legion's End. Or red does not have legions and would not have been able to exile three crisis. So they still have circuitous route that gets them four zombies if they choose. So that's 14 power they have in play. We could really use a Planeswalker, or obviously Legion's End, another Legion's End, or I guess our best possible draw is Tamiyo. Okay. I think I just kind of go all in. Not to brag, but my friend's kind of a big deal. Why do I not Kraken? Oh, just can't kelp myself. <laughs> Let's make a 22-22 trampler. So they have 14 power right now, so I'm not... Not taking lethal. And then to stay alive, 
They have to put 19 toughness in front of the Hydra. To stay alive. Yeah, it doesn't really matter if I untap the Bio Essence Hydra, honestly. I guess I could have. I guess I I guess I probably should have. But it's not it's not a very important detail. But I guess it's better. I guess I should have. So do they have enough? It's twelve. So that's fourteen, sixteen. Well, I'll make it easy. And you see why I minus the Tamiyo to get back Bios and Hydra? This card is insane. <laughs> it really wasn't that great. I mean, it was a good top deck. I mean, it ends the game, but we're already going to wrath their... Like, we're going to wrath their whole board already by just attacking. They're going to have to block with, like, everything. We could have killed all of their, like, a, a grazer and all of their zombies by just attacking for them to stay alive at one. So it, it means they didn't get a draw step, but that's what that meant. The, the drawing the Legion's End after they played the Krasis was a much better top deck than that one. That drawing the Legion's End right after the Krasis, that was in a, that top deck was amazing. I wish we had Unmored Egos in here. So I guess Hydra... Yeah, Trophy kills Field. So I guess we should play it. You know, Hydra still triggered like the Kiora where Jade Light doesn't, but Jade Light can help us dig. Nissa doesn't always line up amazing in this matchup. I'm gonna trim some Paradise Druids and Jade Lights to get these all these other two mana spells in. I don't think I need to duress on turn one. I think I can wait till turn two to duress. The um, basically all I can I can draw Soul Diviner. Like, <clears throat> what would punish me from not duressing on turn one is if I draw one of my four Soul Diviners or my one uh, Paradise Druid. So if I draw one of those five cards, then a turn one duress would be bad. The thing about waiting until turn two, though, is we give our opponent another draw step. And especially, so it looks like they mold the five. I should probably even wait a few turns and just let them. Let them draw some more cards, because we may whiff, honestly. Like the duress with just two cards in hand. Like they could just have some lands, kind of thing.
So I could I could take that one card. I don't think I want to cast it still. Wow. Okay, well that was actually a card Stand worth by. taking. I, need to move quickly. I didn't really consider them having Teferi here of Dominaria, to be honest. That was not a card I was expecting. Huh. This is hardly my worst defeat. Well, that really hurts. Opponent is... Is definitely in there. Of course, they could have just had the fifth land in hand and then top-decked Teferi also. You know, like, we don't know. It's a 50-50 shot. Whether they had land and then drew Teferi or whether they had Teferi and then drew land. But they are certainly in it. So I kind of have nothing going on over here. I mean, they're ahead. All right, that's good. I don't want to give them a chance to draw Vela Summer. So they mold the five. I didn't. They. I've still gone through mo Let's more cards in their deck. Now. Let's skip to the good part. I know my responsibility. That's a really good turn. No, I am not making this up as I go. Looks pretty bad for me. No time for a break. Right, so Golgari Queen can kill Time Raveler. Okay. 
can also wait a turn as well. I'm sure we can kind of see what's going on over here. This is a little bit of a different game here. With Hero of Dominaria, Field of the Dead. You know what? I'm not done yet. Opponents over there with six cards in hand. After that Moldify, this turns out this is a good planeswalker. I don't know if you all know that or not. Turns out it's pretty good. I don't mind Krasis because I have Legion's End for Krasis. Obviously, we can't really survive a board wipe. Alright, so hoping no Veil of Summer. Yay, no Veil of Summer. Settle the wreckage. And blast You just let me know if you're up for round two. Sacrifices must be. All right, so need to play around, settle the wreckage. I want to save Assassin's Trophy to be able to destroy the next field of the dead. Let's try this. I am planning on just sacrificing the Lanor Elf. Whoops! <laughs> I just clicked the wrong button. I'm so sorry. Sorry there. What time wipe? Yuck. Being ruthless has its rewards. I guess I can sacrifice. I guess I could sacrifice a land and have the two Llanowar Elves out here. done the hero thing before. Da -da. They've thinned their deck very well. I'm sitting over here 40 cards left. They have 29. It's 
not that's not bad for me. It's not too bad. <laughs> no, I just, I just, yeah. Sorry, I clicked on your name and accidentally clicked the the ban button. It's, it's very easy to do. Sorry, my bad. We've already well, we destroyed one field of the dead. Got time. Hmm. We'll just get the cell of the wreckage out of here. seen any top end stuff besides the two Vraskas for ourself here am I supposed to blow up blast zone basically blowing up blast zone means like getting a free Vraska Bulgari queen I think it's more impact I think it's more important to have it for Field of the Dead. I've suffered worse. Unfortunately. Alright, we want to draw a Hydra. Hydra Crasis, Bioessence Hydra. Wanna draw a Hydra. This'll work. Magnificent world. The land shall conquer you. Now let's draw Hydroid Crisis. I guess I did sacrifice a breeding pool. I did sacrifice Overgrown Tomb and Breeding Pool before. Instead of Woodland Cemetery Let's and Hintoon Harbor. I kind of forgot about Nyssa in that regard. Might be a bad idea. Wow, they have less than 12 minutes? We're in game two. How are they playing so slow? They just sacrificed all of them? 
They don't have that many cards left in their deck. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14, 15, 16. So just sacrifice 16 lands because the blast zone was already destroyed. So that's the 17th land. And then 18, 19. So they have 19 lands in the graveyard. They just sacrificed 16. They have 24 cards left in their library. They don't have 16 lands and 24 cards, I don't think. Also, I'm glad they didn't just do this instant speed up my end step because I would be really dead. I said 19, so let's land number 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. So they have 29 lands. Barely had the 7. If only they didn't have Teferi and I could have responded with Trophy and I could have just trophied. Yeah, if I could have just trophied one of these other lands, I doubt they have another one. And then they would have got zero zombies. But obviously, I can't cast an instant because of Teferi. Oh, yeah, then they have the Breeding Pool in hand for the 30th. So we have to top deck Legion's End. Or Tamiyo. Nope. This time we needed the top deck Legion's End, not last game. I guess I should have passed the turn and made them attack. Just to waste another 15, 20 seconds off their clock. Alright, so they got big Teferi, which is a big problem. And they are playing Scape Shift. So let's get this Ashiok in here. Get Noxious Grasp and Elder Spell. The Soul Diviners are kind of slow. They have a lot of sweepers. All right, here we go. Cult Wolf. Getting that Twitch Prime sub. Back in here six months now. Thank you so much there, Wolf. I appreciate that. Our fourth sub already of the day. First match in. Y'all are amazing. All right, here we go. I do like the I do like Tamio Ashiok combination where you can start exiling cards with Ashiok and whenever Ashiok dies you bring it back with Tamio. Exile some more cards. <laughs> so many boats. So the real question is what our turn three play is gonna be. Between Ashiok and Jade Light. I'm not decided yet. Gotcha, the timer's going. So I need to reset. Alright, we can do that after the match. We'll do this because of circuitous route. I leave you with only time will Well, those are four good cards. Except for I don't really mind them drawing having scape shifts. 
if we have Ashiok in play, that is. But I definitely like getting rid of these Teferis. Sorry, I'm late. Here we go. No lands. Got rid of a, another big Teferi. Really that and got rid of the Blast Zone. That's important. <laughs> it does seem like we're in for a long stream. Well, like I got so we're playing the five matches today because the you know we're doing like the best of one M twenty decks, and Don't worry, S twenty, the this. standard twenty twenty decks, and I need to play those for quite as long. Oh no, take Ashiok. Reset Ashiok. Well, I only have one black source. That's kind of annoying. Yeah, it's kind of annoying. Only having one black source. Behold. There we go. Two Field of the Dead's down. All right, two field of the deads out of here. We'll take that. Ashiok's done done a pretty good job milling. Yeah, I've I've certainly had a lot worse Ashiok mills than these, but we got two fields and one. The other one we got a Teferi and a Blast Zone, That's more and then like we it. got, then the first one was two Teferis, two Scape Shift. So I'm expecting a sweeper here from my opponent, to be honest. The shock, the tick up shock. Well, I'm expecting time wipe. I leave the Golgari now. Step aside or be crushed. Pain is weakness, leaving the body. So I want to cash in this Lanoir Elf before it gets time wiped away. Cool, got another black source. So we got a Krasis a Memorial. So assuming the deputy is going to take the Vraska, we're in a little bit of kind of trouble here. I mean, it's not do I just trophy the deputy it. so I get Vraska back? Now obviously I can trophy field. 
I'll protect you. But I don't want them to be able to attack my Ashiok. I'm gonna keep Ashiok there. I can just Krasis for four, but if I go Krasis for and draw two, but if I do that, then Teferi can bounce Krasis, and then they can attack Ashiok for one. So I could Krasis for three, and I only draw one card, and then I have Landwehr off to Chump as well. I don't love that, though. I'd rather Krasis be better. So I think... Gosh. So if I, if I kill Deputy... They get a basic one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So then they get a two, two. Now I have to like kill the two, two, I guess, with Golgari Queen. So either that or you know kill Teferi. Really need a trophy this thing though, I guess. I guess it is just Crisis for three. No, I guess I should have Krasis for two and trophied the field. Of, no, because I can't. Because I have to have the lane or off be a blocker. So I can't. I can't Krasis for two and, and trophy because I need lane or off to be a blocker. Here we go. I I don't think they really have any escape shifts left in their deck, to be honest. Like they probably only have the two. I mean, maybe they have more, but I'm I'm kind of guessing they only have the two, considering we had didn't hardly see any before that. So down to 27 cards. We know they have 30 lands in their deck. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 7 lands are gone. I guess this does let them circuitous route and everything. Hmm. I guess maybe I need a trophy this past turn. Beg for mercy. I am listening. No lands in hand. I've got time. Finally, we're getting those lands. So they're they're down to just one field of the dead left in their deck. Somewhere. 
I like having the. A matter of time. I like having the Tamio have a lot of loyalty. They have a third big to ferry. Right on schedule. They've gone through five to fairies. I guess they have a sixth. Hurry. <laughs> hey, Matthew. So yeah, they have settle up. Found a twenty cards in the library. Whoa, Matthew! Thank you so much. Gifting out five subs. All right, so options are either grabbing. I can either get trophy to kill to kill to fairy or grab Ashiok. I'm gonna grab Ashiok. That's so kind of you. Thank you so much, Matthew. The story has and so congratulations to Majusu, Kick Dat Arse, Raging Nomad, Toasted Waffles, and Sloth the Holy. Wonderful, wonderful people. And then we have Face Masher also joining in on the hype, getting the boats out, joining with Twitch Prime as well. Thank you so much there, Face Masher. Uh, thanks, Matthew. Okay, cool. That sounds good to me. All right, not not too great of a not too great of an Ashiok minus that time. We got Field of Ruin was the best card, but three lands and a, a Boreal Grazer. We're not really going for attacking our opponent with them playing Saddle. I'm kind of going for the mill plan. They got 16 cards left. All right, so yeah, that's sub gold number 16. Out of 20 towards the next 12 hour stream. So yeah, we're, we're getting there. Um, I feel like, I think Field of the Dead and Hydroid Crisis, and then yeah, Teferi Emblem. So yeah, I think that's about all we need to be worried about. Keep up the pace. Teferi Emblem, Field of the Dead, Hydroid Crisis. So, we haven't really seen any Hydra Crisis. Alright, that's the fourth one of those. Right on schedule. They don't, they're out of those. Now. Here goes nothing. Oh yeah, Forever Young. Yeah, Forever Young's a pretty good card. All right, they gave up. So my plan here, I was going to cash in Tamio. And grab Assassin's Trophy and Trophy the Hero of Dominaria. Did they just run out of time? Their timer hit zero? Oh, okay. I guess that's another way we can win. Alright, so I was told that the, the rope sound was going, so I'm going to reset Arena. Plus, Arena felt really slow there. So we're just going to reset Arena. If you're watching on YouTube, you can hit the fast forward 30 second button.
Yeah, our opponent's playing really slow. So yeah, I guess their timer just hit zero. What do I think of the new tap lands? I I don't consider them tap lands. They're only you know they're going to be untapped almost all of the time. Yeah, they come into play untapped if you control. Yeah, you know, like if you if you control a forest and it's the green one, it's untapped and so on. Um, but besides that, a little underwhelmed by them. They're if you're playing one or two colors, they're free though, and you know, like they're lands that you'll just you'll just be playing. I think the green one is the worst one of the five. Temple of Mystery. <laughs> there you go. You made Nickel Bowls your phone wallpaper. Yeah, it's... it's mm, beautiful art there. So I guess this is... Probably Grow Spiral, I have to say. Hopefully we draw a land here. I would really like drawing a land. I'm glad we have our Assassin's Trophy against the Wilderness Reclamation deck, or deck that I th think is probably Wilderness Reclamation. Come on, draw land. Come on, deck. That is their ideal hand. But their deck doesn't do any better than that. Played some some Blood Sun Lotus Field decks, and that is just absolutely perfect. Turn three, being able to play Blood Sun and Lotus Field and Kiora on turn three. Honestly, doesn't get any better. So I could just trophy the Kiora. So that they don't get to have an extra three mana this next turn. Uh, Lotus, oh, Lotus Field doesn't have Hexproof anymore. Oh, right. Okay, I'm, I'm all for that. I was like, I can't destroy Lotus Field as Hexproof. pretty good. have anything like great to to get our removal is not very good against risen reef but is any removal good against Risen Reef? I 
But our opponent has eight cards over there. Or no, I guess seven cards. Like, doesn't look good for us. Their hand was incredible. I guess you do not want to talk. The entire set is not out yet. You could use some manners. I know I noted this somewhere. So my plan is to get back BioS and Cider the next turn. I'm expecting my opponent to be a mass manipulation deck, though. Basically expecting my opponent to, to be able to go over the top of me. But I, I hope they can't. I really... Like, that's, that's the, the hope, is that they don't have... Any kind of mass manipulation or anything like that, that we that our Bios Insider could be the biggest creature on the battlefield. All right, so. It dies, it deals that much damage to each to the opponent and each planeswalker they control, right? Not Yeah, not creatures. Ugh Haste Cavalier Flame is not ideal. Probably should chump block with Soul Diviner over Paradise Druid. Yep. I have learned much from my ancestors. Basically, if they have an answer for the Bioessence Hydra, I'm in a lot of trouble. If they don't, maybe Bioessence Hydra can steal it. I don't... I, it should be able to. Like, this... I have millions of mana to work with. And cav with pumping with Cavalier of Flames, this should just be over. They just have five Anthems for their creatures. Well, opponent's deck looked incredible, incredibly impressive, but I don't, I don't expect them to have a hand like that again. I think that's in their top, like, you know, two percent of hands. Like, it doesn't get better. Like maybe even, maybe even higher. Like maybe top one percent. Like that, it really doesn't get any better than what they had there. With that being said. I don't know how to keep them from 
Just going over the top of us, though, to be honest. I guess Noxious Grasp and Trophy. Really good, really impressive use of the, the Red Cavalier there. I, I know, like, like the Soul Diviner for us there got to, like, draw some cards and everything, but it is just so slow. I'm going to trim a couple to get some better removal in. All right, here we go. I like the look of this hand. Elf on one, Diviner on two, Golgari Queen on three, Hydra on four. Never mind, Paradise Druid on two. Hydra on three. I guess the problem with playing Hydra on three is... Yeah, the problem with playing Hydra on three is gonna be Lava Coil. I, I cannot... I cannot get Bioessence since Hydra Lava Coiled, so let's Drop Golgari Queen first. Pity we couldn't have been allies. So many Risen Reefs. Its loss will save. All right, they're down to two. Now, we had a really good hand there. But yeah, Bio Essence Hydra. Hard to kill, hard to kill. All right, bringing in the extra Voracious Hydra instead of... Because, um, yeah, that could be another really big creature instead of one of the Jade Lights. I think the deck goes over the top of Jade Light also. Yeah, Bioessence Hydra with Oko. And yeah, Garuk also, but especially with Oko. I like that quite a bit there too. Alright, let's draw land. Preferably a black mana source. There we go. Alright, this is a hand right here, boys and girls. We got Kiora on two, Bioessence Hydra on three. We call ideal. So stopped playing much for a few weeks and came back today with a vengeance. Built Sultai, Turbo, Vraska, bunch of walkers, Bioessence, Hydra, and Elder spells. Nice. That's that's a pretty cool deck there. Um. I'm not sure of any must-haves. Yeah, that sounds like a whole lot like what we're playing here. Thrives. 
yeah, Bioweapon Insider may have a impact on the next set. I think, I think haste is pretty important right for Hydra. Yeah, I could definitely see it having an impact. They have four lands in the graveyard. So if I kill Cavalier, I take four. I mean, by I, yeah, I take four and Kiora takes four. From Yeah, no, I haven't, I haven't, uh, I haven't gone, gone through that. I haven't talked about that list yet, Jay Gomez. I was thinking about making a video about, um, Star of Extinction. That card's incredible. So, yeah, I'm, I'm planning on making a video about it. But, yeah, I wanted to ask in chat if there was any rares or mythics that I was missing. All right, well, if I kill Cavalier Thorns, then they get Star of Extinction back. That's rough. That's really rough. I don't know this I don't really like where I'm at here. I wanna find a, a planeswalker. It's some more star of extinctions. It's game. That's game. GG's. Oh, this thing's just over. Somebody's played 
you know, Matthew, I've played you know, your Teamer Extinction deck quite a bit. I've done kind of what my opponent's doing to other people, but they're going much bigger with these, with all these Blood Suns and everything main deck. But we put up a pretty good fight. But uh, our opponent's deck just goes much, much bigger than us. This is a pretty bad matchup. I, don't, I wouldn't expect us to win this matchup hardly ever. We're just going through the motions now. We got a cinder block on the wheel. And just riding the bus down the highway. Just on top of the bus, grilling some burgers. Just decided that... Because I can't play Nyssa, so I, I play Nyssa just... It's just horrible for me. So yeah. Alright, looks like our bus crashed and burned. We're going off a cliff anyway, so might as well just put a cinder block. Um... Might as well just put a cinder block for like on the pedal. I think I said on the wheel, but on the pedal. Might as well just put one there on the pedal and go to the roof of the bus and grill some burgers or something. Cause we're we're going off a cliff anyway. All right. Well, good at deck opponent. Let's face something else, please. But we did we did put up a fight at least. No, they got turn one land we're off on the play. The best of openers. Okay. More? No more. So they just got a cavalier over there. Darn. So this is the quasi-duplicate deck. Hmm. The quasi-duplicate deck. Very similar to our last opponent. Where they're going to go over the top of us. I think we found a weakness to our deck. That was like a perfect Jade Light. Drawn two there for us. Expecting, I'm expecting us to uh, really struggle in the late game against our opponent's deck because they have, like you know, like they're just they're just like milling their deck over to Nexus, and then yeah, just getting all these bunch of quasi duplicates on Cavalier Thorns is really broken. So I, I honestly don't really know how we win this. 
But we're gonna try to ultimate Nissa. I think that's part of the plan. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. The land shall conquer you. Really big crisis. Also part of the plan. Um, so the question is, is it necessary to have Nexus to make the quasi-duplicate deck work? Not necessary. You could just play a whole bunch of Jaces, I suppose. Bunch of Jace and Tamiyo like, to be able to get back Jace. Um, I wouldn't hate some way to kill your own Cavalier Thorns also in case you do mill over like all your Jaces or Tamios and stuff and have Cavalier be able to get back Jace. You also kind of need to be able to protect Jace. There, got rid of half the library so far. Get Risen Reef back. Cease this aggression. Tommy L. Okay. to make a splash. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hmm. All right, so they're, of course, going to be trying to take infinite turns here with Nexuses. I think I want to have this trophy up to be able to kill the Tamiyo, just in case. Nissa's passive does work on dual lands, yes, as long as the dual lands are forests. So, like, Breeding Pool, it works, because Breeding Pool 
is a forest island, so the passive ability works there. Hinchland Harbor just says land. It does not say forest. So Hinchland Harbor is not a forest. It does not work on Hinchland Harbor, for example, there. But any, as long as the dual land is a forest, specifically, then the passive ability works on it. All right. Nissa is amazing. So Nissa helped us get there. Um, so Ashiok is like good and bad. Gets them to just Nexus sooner, but it does it does help shut down their Tamiyo's ability to minus and and pick stuff back up. Also exiles the quasi duplicates they can have in their graveyard. I can just use Ashiok to just exile their graveyard, though. Which exile in their graveyard when they have Cavalier Thorns? That's honestly kind of important. Let's play all this kind of stuff. I'm going to cut the Soul Diviners. And maybe Jade Light. Yeah, we're just needing to go bigger than the two and three drops. Speaking of going bigger. Drowned Catacomb doesn't help us out right now, so to be able to land Hydra on turn three, we need something like Watery Grave. Not to brag, but my friend's kind of a big deal. Okay. I love having this curve. Your talents are worth cataloging. I think you will find my notes helpful. Let's get moving. That's a pretty good curve. All right, we got a 10 10. Next time we can play Tamio, make it 16 16. The storied past holds our future. Wait, can I play Kiora and Tamio? So I have four, so I have five. So five, that's six. This Kiora would be seven. So the answer is yes. One drop. Ripples and grows. I have to play this one first. Ah, sun in the sky, brine on my skin. Great day to fight. The ocean surges, life thrives. I would like to ask about any lunar anomalies you have experienced. Let me aid your research. That turn four attacking for 23. That's a pretty big turn four creature. That's a pretty big turn four creature that we're attacking with. We're literally attacking for 20 with a 23 23 on turn four. Find. 
Yeah, Soul Diviners are pretty are pretty slow, but no, are you kidding me? You hit the river's rebuke? Wow. Wow. Opponent hit river's rebuke. Wow, what a hit. Really thought about going with the. I was kind of debating between you know, like one two hydra, two three hydra, three four hydra. Like how many land war elves to play or not play. Well, I guess we'll see if they have Vela Summer or not. I guess this doesn't matter if they have Vela Summer now. Jeez. So the play here is is to like grab Overgrown Tomb, like untap Overgrown Tomb, attack for six, and then before blockers tap the Overgrown Tomb to cast down their creature. All right, so we still got there. Turns out attacking for 23. Attacking for 23 on turn four is pretty good. That's pretty crazy. So I could either go to go down to five, or I just keep this hand that is that could just lose. But if we draw land, it's you know like we could also have like the best possible hand if we draw a couple of lands. I think it's more likely that we just rip two lands here than um, than mulling to five and. And having a real good curve and winning the game on five cards. No, our deck's not weak to to just murder. No, to just removal spells. I mean, if you have, you know, like Bio Essence Hydra does just draw a card also when you have your Cure in play. So if they kill it, you know, it's kind of whatever. It's just like they kill, you know, Risen Reef after it draws a card. It's okay. Obviously, we're taking a risk with this hand. We're taking a risk either way. But we can still do it. Bleh. Omnath kills Llanowar off, and then they have double Cavalier Thorns.
So Soul Diviner is basically it's it's good against like hyper aggro is just a two three for three man for two mana it's pretty good but it's also it's good like you know against the control decks, but these these ramp decks that just go really big. Um, just not it's just not worth it there against the ramp decks. So do we want Duress, Veil of Summer? No, let's just go with this. Yeah, we mulligan I mulligan to six and then kept a one lander. If if it was a seven card hand, I wasn't keeping it. But it was it was a one land hand that had the best possible curve one, two, three that our deck can produce. And I think it's with the upside that that hand had, I think it's worth keeping over going to five and just trying and trying to win a game off five cards. I thought it was a better chance that because if we if we drew land land for our first two draw steps, um, that hand's going to be winning the game, or it's a lot higher percentage chance. You're not allowed to assassin's trophy your own stuff. You cannot target your own things with Assassin's Trophy. Oh yeah, trophy would be really good if you if you could. It, it would definitely be better if if uh, you don't need it and you could use it on your own creature or token or whatever. You know, use it on your own permanent to ramp. It'd definitely be better. I know I'm letting them be able to kill Paradise Druid here. I'm not protecting Paradise Druid, which I could do, but for using one loyalty. Nissa. Planeswalker, good. Nature flows with vigor. I like seeing a planeswalker. And there we go. We got game two. So now they actually got to see what our deck's about. They didn't get to see that game one. We'll see what they have for us now. We saw Negate over there. Could try to counter Negate with Duress. Man. Game three. It's slow, but strong. They are mulliganing. 
we have a, a turn four ten ten here that can then we can play the other Kiora and make it 17. We, so, you know, we can attack for 17 on turn five. I'd really like to draw a one or two mana spell here. Any one or two mana spell. That'll do. Speed us up just a tad. Good. We don't have to risk the Paradise Druid. I was already debating whether or not I wanted to shock. Why do I love Krakens? Cause I could, I could just like not shocked and use the Paradise Druid to play Kiora and then untap Paradise Druid, but we saw we've seen them have Lightning Strike. So I would have been exposing the Paradise Druid to Lightning Strike, which looks like they had. Well, that's rough. You're making me crabby. Hey, Samantha. Oh, come on. Please don't have crisis. Please just don't have crisis. You tapping this for like Cavalier of Thorns. Behold, nature's true power. Yeah, you can have Cavalier of Thorns, not Crisis. So five, six, seven, eight, three, seven, eight, nine. He won't see the end coming until it's too late. Oh, the day is yours. Did I mess this up? No, I got this, right? Yeah. Eighteen. Boom. Lethal. That'll do. That'll do. Just surprised you're taking eighteen. Probably didn't expect it. Morgan, getting that September love in here. Sorry about that. I was looking at the, I was thinking about how to finish that out there. Thanks for bringing the boats there, Morgan. <laughs> that was lethal, man. Dude, this Biowest's Hydra card is ridiculous. Oh, it's so good. <sighs> Yeah, I know. I worried about Krasis. I was like, oh, man, they had Krasis. But then I just drew the Vrasco Golgari Queen. And I was like, wait a minute. Well, that worked. All right, we're three and one now. So we see against these 
these Cavalier decks, um, when we get to have Kraset, or we get, when we get Bioess and Hydra, sorry, when we get to get Bioess and Hydra out there and make it bigger and everything, like, like it does turn out that Bioess and Hydra just goes way over the top of them. The one that we lost to, they were playing a Star of Extinction. That's what wrecked us there with Star of Extinction from that specific... Um, Cavalier deck, but then, but then, yeah, we defeated two other Cavalier decks in a row. Dark Claw, Hydras are the best. I disagree. I think you are the best. Thanks, Dark Claw. All right, looks like we got Simic Flash here. Just kind of keep playing our stuff. You should leave before I make you disappear. The ends justify the means. <laughs> uh, thanks, Steven. Soul Diviner has been average. Not particularly good, but. It's also our matchups. Our matchups are ones the what that we've been playing have been just you know, big, big uh, blue green decks back and forth. Where um, Where the Soul Diviner being like a, a two man two three is just has been kind of irrelevant. Its pain is our gain. So I'm hoping our opponent um, is kind of out of gas. That's the hope. Uh, they had two spells to play. I had one spell cover, but not the second spell. Together, we, we had one spell covered. Be wary of the ground yes, Dalton, I am. Not completely lethal. I don't really know what we're drawing into here, but. Ah, oh, thanks, Dalton. Wasn't breeding pool, whatever it was supposed to be. Okay. I 
So I don't really love Soul Diviner, Kiora, Verasco, Golgari Queen. Like basically, you need every you need every threat to be its own threat. We saw there they could let like Golgari Queen resolve and then attack it. But it, you know, if they just let Kiora resolve and then counter everything else, Kiora is not doing anything for us. But can't take out all of our Planeswalkers though with Bio Essence Hydra. Maybe I should trim bi some Bio Essence Hydras because we have to have like that and Planeswalkers resolve. It's just kind of a 4 4. I'm bringing in Voracious and Krasis. Anyway, okay. Yeah, this this is a, d a donation deck, Dark Claw. So I didn't I did not build this deck. Every time, whenever you see the two Ds next to the deck, it's probably a deck that I didn't build. I guess sometimes people donate and just give me an idea and, and ask me to build a deck, but um, but there's but as far as Jade Light over Risen Reef, there's no other elementals in the deck. Jade Light can get counters that you get to remove with. Um, That really hurts having a, a hand with Veil of Summer that we have to mulligan. But we had nothing that costs like under four mana. Where was I? Oh, yeah. Jayla has counters you can remove a Soul Diviner. So this is a really good hand for our, our opponent. Did they get disconnected or something? There they go. Four or five is pretty good against their deck. So we're just going to go with that. No attacks, please. I, mean, I could have put Krasis as a 3-3 three, three in the air. Then we, we only draw the one card.
but they don't get to counter it. Here, we get to draw two cards, but they can counter it. It's the worst case scenario for me. So when they're gonna have the wolf. I'm glad they didn't just draw a card with Spectral Sailor. I think that would have been a better use of their turn, though, instead of just playing another Trickster. Hey, Joe. Yeah, I was waiting on Legion's End to try to have some better interaction with it, but I'm not getting there. So I guess I'm just going to fire it off. Spell Pierce and Syncopate. Like, was I supposed to hit the Sailor? Honestly, maybe I was supposed to hit the Sailor. That's how it's looking, at least. Should have done this. No, I shouldn't have done the last turn. Well, that's fortunate.
Alright, so you're gonna keep them from being able to draw cards every turn. And we have a 4 3, they have a 2 2. I don't know why they, they got a forest instead of an island. sense. So they can have they can have syncopate for four and unfortunately so if I play Nissa they get to syncopate for three. I guess I could have gone Nyssa first, and then they have to syncopate it. Don't keep Swell Pierce up. Just tap out. Wow, they just tapped out. They really did. I will aid you. The land fights for us. <laughs> Couldn't be bothered to only do syncopate for six. Have to do it for seven. Obviously, they drew the best possible card in their deck. Are you kidding me? Like, their only good card to save them here. They obviously drew that. You've got to be kidding me. Behold, nature's true power. Obviously, they drew the best possible card after just not holding up Spell Pierce when they very easily could have. Yeah, Ult Nissa doesn't do too much for us. I mean, it gets... I guess they won't they get the ambush or trigger. I mean these two lands are indestructible, yes, but I guess we're gonna have to, otherwise the Life cannot be denied. Sailor will be able to So yeah, we have two indestructible lands, which is not very many. We've drawn a land, land war elf, land war elf. Arguably the our worst worst things we could be drawing. Since they didn't keep spell pierce up, my opponent ripped Night Pack Ambusher, their best possible card, and then Spectral Sailor that lets them just draw millions of cards. There's no sometimes there's just no justice. Did I not attack with both lands last turn? 
If I didn't attack with both lands, I meant to. Sorry, I was just frustrated. There's obviously no reason not to attack with both lands. But... We got two Hydrocrasis. Really like to draw Hydrocrasis. Hey, there we go. How about that? It must have been a little bit of lag or something that I tried clicking on both lands like that and, and it just didn't go through or something. Ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So I could just go all out and draw eight cards. Or I could go I could just draw seven and have Veil of Summer up. Yeah, just draw seven. So two. So six. I guess I should have I guess I shouldn't just have Veil of Summer with Spell Pierce. Then do I draw six? Yeah, I guess they, they get to attack with these things, too. So I guess maybe we just do six. Which I guess I mean, I mean five. Because it's 12. All right, so we go up to 16, draw five cards. I guess we still had three lands left in the deck. Still have more lands left. Yeah, there's still seven lands left. Um, Well, if my opponent so like, why don't we attack first? Well, if my opponent didn't have another counter spell, we could have grabbed Nissa and played the Nissa still and had to you know be able to have the land where else for the spell pierce.
I doubt we're winning this though because of Spectral Sailor just drawing millions of cards. Because I, I can't imagine the Tamiyo resolves now. They haven't found a counter spell, or you know, they get to just scry a counter spell to the top. to meet you all right so we can either get the nissa back to keep making more indestructible lands or just get a crisis back i don't have any more nissas to draw that i'm drawing into or any more tamios Think Nissa's gonna get countered. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So draw five again. Yeah. I don't know. They they let Tamio resolve, so it's not like any. It's not like they. Any car will get countered. Makes sense. I know I could have cast down a Nightpack Ambusher there. But I need I need all these blockers. That's a really unfortunate lose in that match. When my opponent tried to throw the, my opponent tried to throw it, and we got to resolve Nissa, and they had no cards, we had no cards, but we had Nissa, they had nothing, and they just drew perfectly, and I did not. The next three turns they drew. The wolf that they absolutely needed, and then Spectral Sailor to draw them millions of cards. And my next draws were just two land war elves and a land. So that's. That was really unfortunate there. But oh well. Anyway, with our deck, I think we. So let's talk about our deck a little bit. The Kiora Bio Essence Hydra combo was amazing. That was really powerful. Vraska, Gogari Queen, Tamio, Nissa, Hydroid Krasis. Those cards were spectacular also. I didn't care too much for Soul Diviner. I don't think that that Soul Diviner is really that worth it. I think I would I would rather just like how like this is just like a slow way to try to, you know, 
trade resources, you know, trade counters to, to draw cards kind of thing. But I think just Hydrocrasis is just such a better card. Nissa is a lot better card. Tamiyo, like, if we want card advantage, just play Tamiyo, Nissa, Krasis. I'd rather just, you know, max out on Krasis and, like, a, a third Nissa, third Tamiyo kind of thing. Um, you know, I think that would just be, that would just be uh, more impactful. Because, you know, when you have Bios and Hydras, you do want lots of Planeswalkers. And we have 10 Planeswalkers here, which really isn't quite enough, I think. But we saw Kiora was, was really, was, you know, awesome, you know, going that into Hydra. But, you know, having more th cards that draw off Kiora, which Hydra Crisis does draw off Kiora. But yeah, I liked, I liked Vraska Golgar Golgari Queen a whole lot. This card was really good for us as well. But yeah, that's what that's what I recommend is just not playing Soul Diviner, just getting that out of here and um, going up to four Crisis. Which I guess that that does mean we'd have to move this one from the sideboard. Voracious Hydra, Voracious Hydra was pretty meh. Um, so there we go, four Crisis, and then another. Tamiyo and Nissa. Um, that does mean that you could, you know, we could move away from J Light Ranger towards Risen Reef, but I mean, J Light Ranger was good. If we're playing Risen Reef, you'd want to play other elementals than just Risen Reef, and I think it's it's kind of hard to play like Cavalier of Thorns with Bio Essence Hydra and Nissa. Our deck doesn't necessarily need that, so I think J Light Ranger is. Um, pretty fine there, but, um, you know, having the, the black removal spells, of course, is really good. We have room for an Unmordigo against the Field of the Dead decks. Our Ashiok honestly did quite well for us, but I, I usually like Unmordigo more, but our, our Ashiok that one time, because we were playing like the Scape Shift version. Which it, you don't see very much anymore. You don't really see Scape Shift. But the Ashiok was good there against that Scape Shift version. But usually I'd want like just a couple on Mordigos instead. With a course on Mordigo being good with Tamio being able to rebuy Ego. Um Sir Eulin Drake, of course, is really narrow. Not too big a fan of Sir Eulin Drake, it's very narrow. I think probably, inst honestly, maybe instead of Voracious Hydra, maybe we could have like some of these other removal spells main deck. Things like Noxious Grasp and Trophy and stuff. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, yeah, it worked pretty well. So Bioessence Hydra is crazy. Crazy good. No, no, the, we don't need the, the six mana Hydra Lord. I don't think so. I mean, I guess we could play one. I don't. It's just it's not that great of a card. Yeah, it gets chump blocked very easily. Um, it's fine, but. It, there's nothing here that I'm looking at that I'd rather have Gargos than, you know, like I think I'd still rather have the second Voracious Hydra than Gargos. It's it's fine. But there we go. Sultai Kiora. Pretty cool deck here. So if you're watching later on YouTube, of course don't forget to hit the like, subscribe buttons over there, leave some comments as well. Um that's it here though. So thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you for the next video.